Defense officials are dealing with serious problems in military aviation. Two more incidents just this week are calling new attention to what some consider a crisis in the key component of America's national defense. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin reports from the Pentagon. It's the latest incident marking an increase of high-profile military aviation mishaps. Four Marines and a sailor showed signs of decompression sickness on board a Marine cargo plane. It lost pressure at 21,000 feet. While in Hawaii, five Army soldiers remain missing after their Black Hawk helicopter crashed Tuesday night during a routine nighttime training flight. Late last week, the U.S. Marine Corps grounded its entire aircraft fleet, some 850 jets, helicopters and ospreys after two recent deadly crashes killed 18 Marines and a sailor. So far this year, there have been 14 non-combat aviation crashes involving U.S. military aircraft, 40 percent higher than this point a year ago. The uptick in crashes has the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee concerned. We're working these airplanes beyond their design life. Just last month, for the first time in the fight against ISIS, the U.S. Navy was forced to ground an entire F-18 fighter squadron after two pilots suffered from decompression sickness. The cabin pressure issue has been pervasive enough that the Navy now requires all deployed aircraft carriers be equipped with decompression chambers. The Pentagon says it has requested nearly $30 billion to fix the readiness issue. Currently, about 70 percent of Marine Corps jets and half the Navy's strike aircraft cannot fly, according to the services. In an exclusive interview last year, the head of U.S. Marine Corps Aviation, Lieutenant General Dog Davis, raised alarm bells. He's since retired. What they need is they need more spare parts uh, and they need a little more time uh, to uh, get those airplanes ready to go and, and do the flying and train they know they need to do as Marines. The military has argued the problems were limited to trainers back home, not deployed forces. But there's increasing evidence the problem has spread and is now affecting those deployed overseas. An F-18 Super Hornet recently crash-landed in Bahrain after taking off from the USS Nimitz. Brett? Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you.